Melissa Bologna, welcome to the Biohacking Secret Show. Hello. Thank you. Happy to be here. I'm pretty excited for us to talk today, especially because by my estimates, and you may disagree with me here, but I feel like in general, the uh, bone broth industry is somewhere between a dumpster fire and a race to the bottom. Oh, wow. And I say that. I'm not talking about everyone in the industry. I'm talking about like in general, I feel like so many products are watered down. A lot of them aren't coming from grass fed or pastured animals. And and consequently, I get upset because you got people doing this stuff because like some, they heard bone broth was good and they're not getting benefits. And they're like, I tried that. And it's like, no, you tried garbage. That's yep. the problem. You know, I mean, do you think I was too harsh on the industry? Feel no, I I love it. <laughs> you know, I'm from New Jersey every day. And you know what? You're exactly right. And bone broth is so much more than meets the eye. And you will, by definition, see benefits from the bone broth itself and the links to your gut microbiome when you have a proper source bone broth that isn't garbage with reputable ingredients and great sourcing. Yeah, yeah. And um and I feel like there's this mass movement going on right now where people are recognizing that eating just eating animal meats doesn't really get the job done. And they're migrating towards bone broths and organ meats and really like more of a nose to tail approach that our ancestors followed where, where you're not only utilizing every part of the animal, but in doing so, you're also paying respect to the animal whose life was taken for you. You know, when you, when you just like eat, you know, a ribeye steak or, or, you know, a strip steak or whatever, like these cuts that we're used to, you're missing out on all of these different amino acids and, and beneficial nutrients, which, which we'll talk about that, you know, are contained in the bones when you know how to extract them and that are contained in, in the heart and the liver and the brain and even the testicles, if you want to get crazy, some people do. So before we kind of, I mean, I know we already kind of dove in, but maybe for our listeners who aren't. Um, familiar with your journey, your work, your origin story. Um, maybe you can share a little bit of that. Absolutely. So I was not this bone broth girl. I was not, you know, I, I was someone who looked at health very different than the average person. I thought health was looking in the mirror and I was like, oh yeah, you look skinny. Great. And um, <laughs> that's called being young. <laughs> and um, I struggled with digestive issues all my life and I never you know, growing up as a young girl, I never thought that it was as serious as it was. Um, I I really struggled. I almost got held back from school because I missed so many days in and out of the doctors. No one could find out what was wrong. I was literally full of shit and that's what was wrong. <laughs> um, and it took many doctors to find this out um, and a bunch of trips to the hospital. So then as an adult, obviously, I was very cognizant of this and kept it in the back of my mind. And then um, I went to school in New York for international marketing. And when I graduated, I did not get a marketing job. I got into acting, um, which technically I marketed myself. And during how'd your, my how'd your parents feel about that? They they were they were happy for me. They were? All right, that's good. Kind of, it was just kind of, you know, a diversion, but yeah. you know, a lot of my peers were taking a year or two off to travel. So I said, I'm going to take a year or two off and move to LA and pursue an acting career. There you go. So that, that's how this all began. Um, and I credit those years in acting a lot into um, being a gritty entrepreneur, which we'll get into later. So it happened when I was on set, I just started feeling really sick, really inflamed, very, um, it started affecting my brain, like very bad brain fog, like where I was like going in and out of feeling a sense of purpose and which, you know, I think people go through that to an extent, but it was so much more mm -hmm. like I felt physical. So my sister's into health and wellness and biohacking. So I always consult her on these things and she kept trying to get <laughs> spirit fingers. Spirit fingers, jazz hands. And to get me to try bone broth. And I never would. So I'm like, that's disgusting. I'm not going to try something with the word bone in it. <laughs> Cup two, I got a bit desperate and I tried something with the word bone in it. And, you know, uh, I I'm going to stay appropriate here, but some of our <laughs> listeners are probably laughing. We try our best. Okay? I promised mom I'd keep it clean. My mom's seen it all at this point. Acting <laughs> career, 
you know, my sex, uh, if I had sex scenes in a film. <laughs> oh boy, that'd be fun as <laughs> mom. <laughs> podcast mom. Yeah. Um, so I finally tried this bone broth and I, I got into kind of the routine of it while I was visiting her in New York. And I wanted to continue the routine back in Los Angeles primarily because I saw massive changes in my digestion. And then I started to see changes even in my right knee by exercise it too much. Um, there's so much cartilage in it. I would feel pain. Mm-hmm. And then I also saw a difference in my skin. I'm someone who would always get laser treatments, Botox, would, you know, buy $300 face cream thinking it will work. And I couldn't believe that that timer kind of caused from Botox, that timer I would get when it wore off completely went away from having bone broth. So I was really, really surprised that a liquid could do this. And then on top of it, this is kind of the ironic part is it got rid of the brain fog. And at the time I didn't know why now I do. And when it got rid of my brain fog and started to make things a bit clear, I felt more purposeful so purposeful that I created a whole company over it. So it's a little bit ironic. I went from, you know, kind of lack of motivation to a complete 180 from the bone broth to create a bone broth company. It's a little funny. And then what really made me passionate about starting a company was going back to Los Angeles to continue the routine and finding a, it wasn't easily accessible there wasn't a lot of places like New York had that where it was super common to find. And then B, the lack of good options. I found they were either too gamey or too weak, um, or they just were like a bunch of, it was just a bunch of snake oil where it was a bunch of like herbal masking and it wasn't really a strong bone broth down to its core. Uh, mm-hmm. so that's why I started beauty in the broth and left, um, Excuse my dog. Um, it's okay. I got I got three of them. We they run the show around here. They do it every day. <laughs> amazing, amazing. It's a kennel. They just add to the audio. Yeah. Um, so that is why I got extremely passionate about creating a bone broth company because how it changed my life and seeing the lack of options out on the market. Totally. Yeah, that's awesome. And I I love that like you found this way to align your your journey um some of like the insights that you discovered in going through your hero's journey and then make that like your passion and your product that's cool and and we'll i'd like i'd like to cover both like health stuff and even entrepreneur um uh, some of your entrepreneurial journey because a lot of our listeners are either entrepreneurs or people that like you know have control over their income and, yeah. and they understand a lot of the nuances of like, you got to have your shit dialed in and like your health is directly related to your capacity to add value and therefore your capacity to earn, you know, and, and attract abundance into your life. So we can talk about both. I think, I think everyone would, would probably appreciate that. So if you have stuff that's relevant on either side, like feel free to throw it in, I guess. So let's go to the entrepreneurship side a little bit. So when was the moment where you're like, I got to launch this? Like, I don't like these products. I want to make my own product. And then where did you even start? Do you like start visiting farms and like, hey, what do you do with all the bones? (laughs) Or like slaughterhouses? Terribly (laughs) far off. Uh, The aha moment was definitely when I was in Los Angeles. My sister was in the car and like a bunch of little basic bees. We did our workout. We're like, okay, let's go get bone broth. I'm very basic. I need my coffee, my smoothie, my bone. So we went to, you know, thinking we'd find some like bone broth shop and nothing was coming up on Google maps. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Because in New York, there's at least 11 of them. And in New York, I consider a drinking culture in LA to me, it's a center of health and wellness. So then kept Googling, Googling, and it seems like the place to get it is the supermarket, which doesn't really feel like an experience. It feels like a supermarket. Yeah. So that was the aha moment. Let's go, girls. We're in Jewel. And then from there, I started, you know, ordering all the, I started researching all the bone broths, ordering all the bone broths, trying all the bone broths, and it made me even more passionate about the bone broths. Yeah. Um, Because none of them were it. All of them had some sort of 
thing that I didn't like. And I'm just some basic girl with, you know, my opinion. So I'm sure a lot of people feel this way. Yeah. Um, you know, I worked in a restaurant for many years growing up. I know really good quality food and everything. So that's where the passion came from, uh, the drive to create a company. And then when I'm like, okay, time to start the company, it was kind of like, like tick, tick, talk, talk. So I was sitting at my laptop and I literally started Googling how to start a company. And I realized the first thing I needed was an LLC, which makes it easier too to track things and expenses and keep it all kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Um, so I realized that was the first thing I needed. I got that up and running. And what, of course, what, how'd you pick your name? Oh, that you know what? That didn't come day one. That came down the road. I thought I had a different name. I thought I was going to name it Bone Talks because I thought it was funny, like Bro Talks and Bones. And, yeah, yeah, it could work. <laughs> right? Not but as then, good, though. Not as good as your name. It's not as good. And people <laughs> were right. They associated it with something like toxic. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so, you know, I ended up stewing on it no pun intended for a a while a couple of months and just kind of had a working title as they say in acting and i came up with the name myself because i'm a big um well was a big disney fan before they started putting dicks on everything growing up i love beauty and the beast a a classic um story yeah and you know it was my favorite movie growing up so i thought hey beauty and the broth it's very punny and i'm a punny individual (laughs) yeah it's great Good name, Beauty and the Broth. I love it. Beauty and the Broth. And and I didn't realize it then when I picked the name, but I realize it now. It's kind of genius because it's great. Yeah. You you get the male customers regardless. They don't care what the name is, okay? Mm-hmm. And by the way, male customers are my favorite. They come onto the site, they they're just like lift, they buy in bulk. And yeah. what's great too is our name crosses over into the beauty sector, which Bone broth, com- bone broth companies don't achieve. If you look at all my competitors, it's all kind of farmy and and kitcheny yeah. and yeah. none or holistic. None of it crosses the beauty sector. And despite bone broth having many benefits that don't pertain to beauty, I mean, just the collagen benefits heavily pertain to beauty. Mm-hmm. So I think it. No, you know, we, we get all the biohackers and people into self preservation, but I think it's a great <laughs> opportunity where it opens the window into people looking to implement things into their beauty routine that would have never looked at bone broth that could be doing so much good for themselves aside from their appearance by having this. Yeah, totally. No, it's 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 brilliant, and like the packaging is great. I mean, this is. I think this is the chicken one uh, for, I mean, some people are watching on video and some people are listening, but um, phenomenal packaging. And you guys can check it out at um, beauty and the broth.com. We've got a biohacks discount code for 15% off. I love it. Like I brought, I had to save these two for our podcast. Um, I was like, don't, don't eat them all. Don't eat them all. You want to keep them for the podcast. You know what I mean? But I was, I was traveling a couple weeks ago to, um, I went to Austin, Texas, and then I went to Fort Lauderdale. So I went for a buddy's birthday in Austin, Texas, and then I went to Fort Lauderdale for uh, a friend and client's wedding. And I just threw a bunch of these in my suitcase, and I was I would just like arrive. I'd fast like the whole. I always fast when I'm flying because you're just getting like nuked right. with gamma rays and everything. <laughs> so I don't eat anything, and I, I do my uh, I do my molecular hydrogen and my my ketones. And then um, when I land, I would, I just, this might, I don't know, you might be like, Anthony, you're not supposed to do that. But I would just rip open a package in the corner and just mainline the thing and just take it all down in concentrated form and then chase it with a little water. And it like, it tastes really good. I mean, it's better when you make it up the way that you're supposed to, you know, with, with water and like, you know, reconstitute it. But even just like, it's so convenient in these packages because they're not, they're not in these like bottles that are going to break in your suitcase. They're light. So you're not uh, going over the weight limit. And then you get your bag when you land and you're good to go. Now, the only mistake I made the second time, the second trip was on a bigger scale, bigger picture. I made the mistake of flying spirit and then they lost my bag. So I, I was like, we landed. I'm like, I'm going to crush some bone broth. And I go there and I'm just like sitting at the carousel, like no bag, no bag. Never- and then yeah. And then, yeah, whatever. That's another, that's another story, neither here nor there, but, um, 
that's I've been loving them for travel for that reason because it can be difficult to get to eat for like nutrient density and to find healthy food when you're traveling and it's super easy to throw a bunch of these in your suitcase or in your carry-on bag. I don't know if you can do a carry-on, but you could put them in your carry-on. It's three ounces of potent concentrate, which I would love to say I'm the genius, clairvoyant, thought three steps ahead on this. <laughs> yeah, that'd be ninja. It did not. <laughs> yeah, it just worked out that way. It worked out that way, but like once again, genius. Yeah, it yeah. Be like the perfect ratio for a standard twelve ounce cup. If you add um, I recommended eight ounces of water. I know you get 11. I'm good at math. Yeah. But because it's so strong, it's in each of those pouches, bone broth is measured in bricks, which is the percentage of solids. Mm -hmm. And that's 25 bricks in there where an average cup at bone broth, uh, not at bone broth, of bone broth is three to five bricks. Wait, so, can you say that one more time? That, like, that's a big differentiator. Okay. So, yeah, so a regular standard cup of bone broth you could get at the supermarket or bone broth pop-ups, wherever, yeah. that's reconstituted with water already, is three to five bricks. What's a brick? And it's a measure of solid. So all the solid components broken down um, during the cook process of the bone broth. So like all the all this good stuff for you? All the good stuff. Okay. And in that pouch is 25 bricks. So Whoa. when you add recommended eight ounces of water – it's still two and a half times stronger than your average cup of broth. And what Anthony said about travel, which is a, why I love male customers. He's like mainlining the, <laughs> I just take like 25 bricks to the face. <laughs> 25 bricks I'm using the, the lingo. It is great for travel. And something else I'm really proud of is obviously the sourcing, the ingredients we've chosen. And also in our beef and chicken recipes, there is no salt added, which is actually surprising because it tastes really good. And it's a low in sodium, which is unique for a bone broth. Yeah. And it's easy. Like if you want more, you know, you know, pink Himalayan salt or whatever in there, it's easy to throw it in, but so some people don't want salt or, you know, whatever, just, it's, it's, it's not their taste. So that's cool. Okay. So a normal, normal cup of bone broth, you're getting like three to five bricks of the good stuff. And in yours, yeah. you're getting like 25. Yes. But when you, add, if you mainline it, you're getting 25. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you put it with eight ounces of hot water, which we recommend, you're still getting, you know, like eight to 10 bricks. But if you use the whole package, don't the same amount of bricks end up inside you of you? It's like the technicality of cutting it down with water. That's my, oh. it's my um, USDA regulated. Oh, okay. Um, I'm all speaking, but yeah, you're get. No matter how you consume that pouch with water in your cooking, you're still getting. You're still consuming twenty five bricks. Okay, cool. Um, so I mean, I was I got a workout in before this, and then I was before I got in the shower, I was using um, my buddy. Andy Nilo from Alitura Naturals, he got me um, micro needling. Oh, nice! It's basically this like torture device that you roll on yep. your face, and like all these needles go into your skin, and uh, it stimulates your body's natural collagen production. So it increases like blood flow to the surface of your skin and gets your body making more collagen. And um, I mentioned that because like collagen is a big part of your bone broth as yep. well. So maybe we could take a step back and explain, like, I think a lot of people know what collagen is, but a lot of people might not. So maybe we could talk a little bit about, like, what is collagen, why why it's in bone broth, why it's good for us, and, and why people who want to heal their gut, revitalize their skin, and get rid of brain fog should care. Sure. So collagen is massively important. It's effectively what holds up, it's like the scaffolding of our skin. It, hold, it holds everything up. People think it's just, you know, for beauty, because as we, you know, hit hit the 30 mark, our body starts stops making collagen and then it starts to deplete over time. But collagen is also in your hair, skin, nails, it's in your joints. So think about it. No matter who you are, I don't care how much money you have, what you do, who you know, your collagen stops and it's depleting over time. So we need to do something about that. And it's um, really important you get it from the right source. Like a lot of people are into collagen powders. And, you know, I would be careful with that too, because it's all about how your gut absorbs and ingests it. And the thing I personally love about bone broth is it's served hot. It's liquid. I'm not into bone broth powders either. 
um, and it goes directly into your gut, lines your gut, and pumps your gut with all the amino acids and collagen directly. Um, and the molecules of collagen in bone broth are even smaller than those in face cream. So it's, it's the best way for your body to re- receive and absorb collagen. And um, they say good skin comes from the gut. Like if you're, you know, doing all the facials, the cleaning, the nicest face creams, and you still have marks on your face, you have to really look inside and see what you're eating. And it all links back to the gut. Um, and the brain fog I mentioned, that too stems from the gut because that's when they say gut feelings and things like that, it's once again, punny, but they, it comes from somewhere and it comes from because it's true. Our emotions come from the gut when you're feeling happy or sad, um, depression and anxiety come from it. So it's no different with brain fog where you're getting brain fog because your gut is, you know, either bad digestion, you're eating poorly or just needs a, a lining. There's a million reasons why your gut probably isn't doing so great. Like think about our environments. Um, so it's really important to incorporate a bone broth and to incorporate a great source of collagen for yourself, which obviously I recommend bone broth. But if you're a powder person, just be really careful because your gut doesn't ingest it too well. And a lot of people just slap on collagen powder onto things without actually mm-hmm. seeing um, you know, the different types of collagen and, you know, some of it's really not going to do much for you. Whereas the bone broth, it's the bones broken down during a very long cook process slowly over time. And of course it's equally as important if you do choose a bone broth to make sure that the sourcing is great because you don't want to receive the collagen from like a weak, sickly animal because then like, that's like gonna- every factory farmed animal yeah and that's gonna show up so you just have no matter what source you use we could all agree collagen is massively important um but just just dig deeper into it because this is your body and your self-preservation mm-hmm, for sure and yours is is like the the beef <laughs> one i'm looking at so it's it's organic beef bone broth and it's beef bones from ranch raised and grass-fed beef without any antibiotics and, okay. or hormones, which is pretty rare in the industry to have all of that. Like even for the beef to be our beef and chicken is USDA organic, but in full transparency, even though the chicken says USDA organic, the chicken is regulated by the FDA and mm-hmm. the FDA regulates things a little bit different than the USDA. Mm-hmm. And our beef is like one of three of the biggest bone broths where the beef is USDA organic. I even think it's like down to two people now. I think one of our competitors is gone. <laughs> oh, really? So to be USDA organic for the beef, it's you really have to jump through a lot of hoops and it's no joke. They check everything. And so that should be the number one thing you look for. And to all fairness, um, I'm very lucky. I have a very great um, supply chain that cares a lot about the integrity of the product that, you know, helps me with this USDA paperwork and stuff. So, you know, I'm not going to knock like these small mom and pop bone broth companies who don't have the beef USDA organic, just, um, you know, do your homework and do your due diligence. Um, and like I said, the chicken, it's like, it's, it's a different jurisdiction. So they dig deep in other ways, but not in that capacity. Um, but make sure too, like our chicken comes from Mary's organic chicken. Like that's, they sell that at luxury restaurants on the menu. Um, so ours is very reputably sourced. And it's something I initially ironically cared about. Cause I'm a huge animal lover. Um, looking at my little dogs right now and, you know, up, upon discovering this journey and really getting into health and gut health, uh, it became a larger part because you are what you eat and, you need the best benefit. And in order to be the best, you have to beat the best. Not be, beat's the wrong word. You know what I mean? You got to eat the best. Eat the best. You want to be the best? You got to eat the best. I eat my competition and I drink the tears of my enemies. No, this is great. So, I mean, a couple of things on collagen too. 
And, and I want to, you, you've touched on some of the stuff you want to look for when getting bone broth. Um, and guys, if you like, if you're drinking bone broth and you're getting value from this episode, or you know, people that, that drink bone broth, like share this episode with them. And if you want to try some of Melissa's uh, beauty and the broth, bone broth, you can go to beauty and the broth.com enter discount code biohacks, B I O H A C K S. It'll save you 15% like with collagen. So I had, I, I was blessed to have Lyme disease twice. And that's oh. like a bacterial infection that like actually starts consuming your collagen. So mm-hmm. and like, not only do we have like the challenges of, of collagen production and the fact that that, that whole process becomes less efficient as we get older. Um, but then when you have like this bacteria in your body, that's like actively consuming collagen, it's a whole nother level. And, um, and, and I experienced a lot of like the, the, the pain and inflammation and things like that that came with it. And it was like, it was super easy to get, you know, injured and like pull muscles and like tear ligaments and stuff like that. And, um, but beyond that, like you mentioned the aesthetic benefits, right? So it's like, it's the, the elasticity and the appearance of your skin and, and your hair and nails, like all depend upon collagen. But then you go even another level deeper, like people are starting to realize that we we're not like this sack of biochemical reactions. We are bioelectrical beings and the electricity in our body actually dictates a lot of the biochemical reactions that are taking place. Well, the the electrical signaling of our body, you know, in our brain and nervous system, in our muscular muscular skeletal system, it all requires structured water and collagen and for those, for those signals and nerve impulses to happen fast and efficiently and effectively the way that they're supposed to. So like, it's not just a beauty product, but it's also for the health of your nervous system. If you're an athlete and you want your, your muscles to fire fast and explosively and powerfully, like you need to have collagen in order for that to take place. So I want to kind of add, add in that little, um, those, those two pennies, um, beyond that, you mentioned that like the collagen that's in your product is smaller. I think you said than the collagen in a lot of like skin creams and stuff. Yeah. Have you ever rubbed your bone broth on your face? No. However, I have big business for my company and I could see um, in a couple of years adding an actual bone broth based face cream. Yeah. Stay tuned. Then your dogs will really love you. Oh yeah. Okay. So can we go a little bit deeper on sourcing? Like, I guess, cause it's, it's hard for someone that, that isn't like a nutrition ninja to walk into Whole Foods or Air One or wherever they shop and decipher between a good bone broth that's actually going to help them and something where they might as well, you know, go drink a bottle of, of, you know, water a couple aisles over. <laughs> So like, if you're like bone broth shopping, like what, what are you looking for? What's kind of the checklist in, in your, in your mind? So, so I was one of those people, right? Like I'm not, I'm not some, well, now I technically got my nutritionist degree, but this this happened four months uh, on an online program this past September. Um, But prior to that, um, something I was taught is to always flip the product over. You'd be surprised what people could get away with. I, I'm a little bit shocked on the front of some product. There's a bunch of really sexy claims and I often fall into the trap of it. And then I get home and I look at the back and I'm like, what the, um, so something you really have to look at is the nutritional facts and the ingredients. I repeat ingredients. So in the ingredients, make sure you recognize every single ingredient. Like if you have trouble pronouncing it, chances are it could be a little dodgy. So that's the number one thing. Like, uh, you know, uh, whenever I'm in the supermarket, you better believe I go to the bone broth aisle and I check out what's there. And even, I'm not going to say who, but even like reputable supermarkets have their own brand with all the sexy call outs, organic, you know, low sodium, and I look at the back, the third ingredient is sugar. Sugar mm. in bone broth. That's crazy. And What's that for? Why would they have sugar? Yeah, who the hell puts sugar? It's crazy. So ingredients is massively important to look for. 
obviously to do with sourcing, try ideally for safety purposes, look for the USDA organic button. Like I said, you know, I, I don't want to be tough on small business. I am a small business with, you know, great circumstances. Um, you know, some people give, give up on the USDA organic group for, for their own reasons that we won't get into on here. But just know that the USDA or organic for beef really does do their homework. Um, and then, of course, the nutrition facts. You know, take a look at the sodium. If it's really high in sodium, chances are it's just like a, a salt bed where they just masking it in a bunch of salt and flavors that are obviously high in sodium. Obviously, there's also natural sodium to bone broth. Um, so, so just finding something balanced and and look at um, look at the the amount of protein. Protein is really important. So if you have a good bone broth, it's going to be higher in protein. Like just in, in that, those pouches you have, I think the, the chicken is 15 grams of protein and just those three ounces. And the yeah. beef 14 grams, which Holy is a Holy cow. Lot. That's a I ton. Know. It's That's a, a, little, it's a little protein shake right there. Yeah. It's, it's really high and also we're in concentrated format. So there you have it. Um, so those are things I look for. And of course, sure, look at like the sexy call outs and claims, but take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Um, out of curiosity, like, is it possible to, for a company to be like USDA organic? I think you said there's only like two others though, right? That are USDA organic bone broth? Yeah, for beef, for beef. For beef. And does that also imply that they are grass fed? Um, It doesn't imply necessarily that they are grass fed. However, they have to be really, really reputably treated um, there has to be a certain level of care, diets, um, and it, I think it typically means no hormones, which is a big one because you want to make sure that they aren't having any antibiotics or hormones. Yeah. Um, but for beef, that's a very good question. Yeah, no big deal. I was just I was just curious. Yeah, like if it if it because because yeah, it's like how I don't know. I almost feel like with all the stuff that we know goes into factory farmed animals and stuff from the, the hormones and, and the antibiotics. And then they're eating like, you know, glyphosate corn and, and this and that, you know what I mean? That all gets concentrated in their tissues. I'd, I'd be shocked if they could still get, you know, a quote unquote organic label if they weren't. So I looked at it quickly and it, it really typically refers to the way the cattle is raised. So mm -hmm. with like feedlots, um, and, you know, being crowded in dirty sanitary conditions and obviously like the antibiotics and hormone element. So it doesn't necessarily mean um, grass fed, which now Anthony's telling you how to find a good bone broth too. Look out for things, grass fed, grass finish. But because I have it on my packaging, if that was not true, the USDA would make me take it off. Like okay. for instance, like, You'll notice, uh, not on this pouch, um, because we just printed a new one for the beef. Um, on the beef, we have, you know, our tagline is Sip Yourself Stunning. We have it on the chicken and not the beef, because the USDA made us take that off because it's a claim. So they're very, it's on that one because now we have these new printed pouches. But mm. on the new beef we ju that just came out, it's not on there. So they, they look at everything you write on your packaging. And if it wasn't true about grass fed, grass finish, it would have to be taken off. So, wow. so, so they're, they're fact checkers as well. Sounds like you get to spend a lot of time with the USDA folks. Yeah. <laughs> what a, what a treat. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure they're lovely. Okay. So what, what else should our listeners know about, you know, beauty in the broth, your bone broths, the benefits as they pertain to gut health or, or, um, I mean, I mean, you know, we talked a lot about hair, skin and nails and, and brain fog. I mean, there's so many people now that are dealing with like chronic health issues, their guts a mess. I mean, like if I go back to when I was dealing with Lyme, like I, that it inspired me to go super deep down the, the biohacking path and like really clean up my nutrition and all this stuff. But I remember it was like when I first started eating, kind of more of like a paleolithic style diet, it was like all of a sudden it seemed like almost 
in tandem with that, like my gut health got worse. And I was like, is this because I'm eating better? Is this because of like the underlying line? You know what I mean? And I remember there were times where like, this is a little bit graphic. So maybe earmuffs for our listeners that don't want to vomit wherever they're at. Um, but like I, I'd go to the bathroom sometimes and it was like, if I ate like a salad, like a kale salad, my, it would, my butt would turn to like a salad shooter. I'd look in the toilet and there'd be like a whole bunch of like undigested chewed up kale. And I'm like, I'm clearly not digesting this. Well, kale is actually not great for you, which actually kind of upsets me because it's one of like the few salads I like. Yeah. I mean, there are, I mean, there's, there's a lot involved with it. You know, people that have thyroid issues and stuff that, yeah. you know, if they're overdoing kale, it's a goiter gen and can, and can it's affect that. For your digestive system to break down kale. Yeah. And you can do stuff like, like massaging the salad like to pre-digest it. So a lot of people will do that. They'll like, they'll like massage the kale salad beforehand to kind of start breaking it down. And that makes it, and, and of course, juicing. Salad. Huh? Lucky salad. Lucky salad. Yeah. It's play a little wow. bear, play a little berry white, make an afternoon out of it. So, I mean, what, what else should we know if, if we're talking like bone broth 101 or bone broth 201, what else should we know about, about bone broth, the benefits, so what you just said about your experience with the kale salad, yeah. you were on bone broth that would likely not happen um, simply because is bone broth's original purpose, other than caveman days, use all the animal magical elixir to heal you. Um, its original modern day purpose is for leaky gut. Mm -hmm. So when you have bad digestion, so they always recommend it for IBS, that, you know, bad digestion, all the things, but your average person does have bad digestion. And contrary to popular belief, I think everyone has IBS to an, ex an extent, depending on, you know, what you're eating that week. But um, when you drink, when you have bad digestion, food particles seep through your gut lining and cells go to fight it thinking it's an invader. And that's what gets you sick. That's what gets you inflamed. And oftentimes like, you know, with food sleeping through everything, it can make you run to the toilet. So when you're having bone broth, something that's pretty fascinating about it, which is why I always credit bone broth itself to the benefits and the gut microbiome um, for the benefits because it's lining your gut and your gut's very powerful. It's, um, another brain, if you will, um, is it when you drink it, it goes through your gut and all those holes caused from bad digestion, it literally puts in a lining. So there's a barrier of effectively velvety broth in your gut for food to pass through successfully and not go through those holes. So I always find that really impressive and fascinating and not for anything else, have it for that reason. Yeah. Let alone while it's filling in those holes and pumping you with collagen, amino acids, proteins, all the things. Yeah. A good resource that people might want to check out. Um, Dr. Kellyanne Petrucci has a book called The Bone Broth Diet. And, and the tagline is like, lose up to 15 pounds, four inches, and your wrinkles in just 21 days. And, uh, but what, like, kind of what happens when we do like these longer, like bone broth fasts are, um, you're able to give your digestive system a little bit of a break. So most people are consuming a ton of like anti-nutrients, these like immunogenic and allergenic compounds that that have that trigger and initiate a low level autoimmune reaction in the body. They disrupt or even destroy the microvilli in the intestines. And just by pausing those foods, they then kind of like give their body the opportunity to, and their gut the opportunity to start healing. And, and restoring those tight junctions in the gut. But then when you throw bone broth in on top of that and all of the collagen and nutrients that's in bone broth, then it's like throwing gasoline on the fire in a good way because you're now not only pausing a bunch of the garbage and the anti-nutrients and those compounds that, that you know, are causing autoimmune reactions and inflammatory reactions, but then you're also healing your gut with the collagen and, and all of the other uh, beneficial compo compounds and components of uh, bone broth. Now, that book is a great resource. I have never tried her product, but I personally just don't do like bone broth powders and packets. It's not my, it's not my thing. Um, I don't think that that's as beneficial, but you know, I'm not saying anything bad about her product or whatever. I've never tried. What would you say are like some of the key differentiators between like just in general, 
a a bone broth powder versus you know like actual bone broth and a concentrate to me i i find this a little ironic um just because the person you're speaking of i i dig deep right yeah um and i i i think i think she's absolutely fabulous she educates people on bone broth she's made it a big thing um and she's helping a lot of people get better feel better about themselves um but on a podcast a really long time ago of hers i heard her say um that your gut can't really ingest powder so whoa really pull, <laughs> yeah pull, pull that clip up that's some fire marketing that's fired like no. back in, back in the Back in the Jay Z and Nas days, yeah, I think I think what she's doing is absolutely great, and you know maybe market research has changed. I don't know, but I look up all my competitors and I listen to everything they've done. You know, so yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna be the best. I'm gonna eat the best. <laughs> Give me your tears, Gypsy. I would just say that powders. You just have to be careful because it, whether or not this is true, if your gut can ingest it or not, there's definitely truth to it where your gut can only ingest parts of it for sure. Um, and also, I think that by changing bone broth in its pure form into now a powder, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> not a scientist, but I would think that that would kill a lot of the beneficial nutrients that we get from the cook process, the long cook time, which is why you have it in that format. Like, mm -hmm. So I, I think... Why, why change something's form if if all the great if it's nutrient packed collagen packed all in there if anything condense it down and make it concentrate to make it very potent yeah it makes more sense um do you have you done any bone broth fasting do you have any protocols and and um, things like that that you've done yeah i mean i personally I've done fasts. Um, I'm the one who can't fast for too long because I do have hypothyroid. Um, but, you know, some of my friends have done it with my broth. I've, I've done it for, you know, as long as I'm able to. Um, and what's great about it, the one of the things I love most about bone broth is it actually does curb your appetite. Like if you all have it after the gym, not only because it's packed with protein, but because I want to eat everything in sight after, um, so when I have it, it really curbs my appetite and saves me from myself. Um, so I, I love a bone broth fast. I would say, you know, you could definitely do it for three to five days, but I wouldn't do it any longer than that. Um, just to err on the side of caution. Um, and because I'm, you know, not a doctor, I'd say consult your doctor. Yeah. <laughs> like corporate I've gotten. <laughs> yeah, everyone's everyone's got different underlying health issues and challenges and this and that. And and sometimes longer fasts can be contraindicated if if you've got blood sugar dysregulation or, you know, different different things going on. So, of course, this is not like everybody listening should do this. I, that's never the case, you know, but um, I like doing three to uh, five day fast. I've never done a seven day fast. I kind of want to try it. I know some people that have had like amazing results with seven day fasts. But yeah, I heard that five days like when i started when i get over three days like everyone starts looking like a drumstick and you know i'm like it's very very challenging work productivity drops off so it's like i know it's beneficial but i'm like okay i can't take like a week off life here and just you know fantasize that's, um that's a lot i give you a lot of credit it's great for you i just i just not for the faint of heart yeah yeah it's it's challenging but um so three to five day fast for those of you guys that are doing it like an option, you know, if you want to talk with your doctor about this, that's probably wise. But um, you could also consider if you're if you've done water only fasts or even dry fasts, try a bone broth fast. And um, and yeah, if you're digging this episode, share it up, fam. Go to beautyandthebroth.com. Pick yourself up some organic beef beef bone broth concentrate, some organic chicken bone broth concentrate. You got anything else on there that that you're offering? Yeah. One thing I would like to point out, it's yeah. thebeautyandthebroth.com. Thebeautyandthebroth.com. We are called Beauty and the Broth. Uh, we also recently launched a vegan recipe a month and a half ago, two months ago at this point. Yeah. So that's on there too. What's uh, that made out of? It's made out of pea protein, kombu, 
uh, seaweed. We add some sea salt in there and ginger. Cool. All right. Nice. So ignore uh, the URL I said a bunch of times before and go to the beauty and the bra. Dot com and enter discount code biohacks to save 15% if you would like to do this. And uh, if you do end up, you know, I mean, a lot of our listeners like to try different protocols and test things out. Like that's part of the fun and in and, and, and this self-optimization journey and taking control of your health. So if you guys come up with any cool protocols, share them with, uh, with Melissa and myself and let us know what you're doing. Anything else that you feel compelled to share with our listeners that they need to be aware of, anything about your entrepreneurial journey, ins- inspiration, motivation. Do you just want to vent? Do you just want to vent and have, you know, a, couple, a few thousand plus, 10,000 plus people, 20,000 plus people listen? And this is completely off topic though. Yeah, right, let's try it. Who cares? See where it goes. It's completely off topic, but it's like taking over my life this week. What is it? Um, when I was in Connecticut um, on Friday and I, I had time in between stuff and my grandparents are actually buried there. So I was at the cemetery, couldn't find their tombstone was trying to call my mom to figure out where it was. And I hear a man yell really far away. And I turn around, just like, why is this man yelling? And he's like trying to warn me. And I see three huge dogs charging at us. And Whoa. I'm like, holy crap. And, uh, and anyways, cut to the, the perpetrator tackled me down to the ground, really hurt me, like grabbed my little dog in his mouth. And it was just a really big nightmare. We're all okay. But um, I'm just guard for life now. Holy cow. So you got attacked by a dog and then it, and then it, and then it bit your dog. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your dog's and okay. When I was going down like, you know, he tackled me really, really hard. Like I've been, I, I felt, I feel like I've been like in a car accident all week, which is great. I have the bone broth by the way, cause it's all inflammation. Yeah. Um, Rub some bone broth on it too. I don't know if that, I don't know if that works. You know what? I, 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 so yeah, this has just been on my mind because it's rocked my world. And like this morning I had to go to the hardware store and it's like super nice. Like lab came up to me to say hi. I was all excited. And I was like, that's so I'm really that about it because i love that's dogs. traumatic i mean to see like these three dogs i turn around they're like hunting me and i i picked up my dogs to get them in the car because i knew it wouldn't be good and then as it's taking me down one by one you hear you hear my one dog in the scuffle and you hear him squeal and cry and then the little dog taken from me you hear her squeal and cry i thought when i got up off the ground that i was going to be looking at a bloodbath like it was yeah. crazy I'd be terrified that my dog was going to get killed. Oh, it, it was a really awful experience. So that has rocked my world this past uh, this past week. Yeah, what do you what do you do for that? You go get therapy or something? <laughs> I mean, it's for sure trauma. So you know, all things considering, I'm very lucky. The fact that both my dogs are still here, like. I don't know if I would have came back from that. Like it would have been awful. No, for sure. There's in, in North Carolina where we're uh, building our family homestead there. So there was this uh, great Pyrenees, which was like the first dog that I had, like when I was a baby, it's, it's like these big white dogs. My mom named it Shasta after, after Mount Shasta. And it was like the sweetest, gentlest dog. But in, in North Carolina, there's this like great Pyrenees that's like, it's not wild, but it's like always roaming around and it's got it, it. I don't know. It didn't look right in the head. Like we were checking out properties when we were kind of looking for what land we were going to buy and this and that. And like, we ran into it a number of different times. This guy's like crazy looking its eye, kind of like Cujo. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't trust this dog. It doesn't, you know what I mean? Whatever. But they found it. The last time I was down there, my buddy's like, so you know that dog that's like always roaming around that great Pyrenees. And I'm like, yeah, he goes, we found it with its throat ripped out. And I was like, what would do that? He goes, there's only one thing that would do that. He goes, a big cat. He goes, like, bears don't do that. He goes, cats rip the throat out. And they usually do it. He goes, there's, like, panthers, like, in this area. Like, you don't really see them because they're so stealthy. He goes, but I've seen, he goes, I saw one jump 
like he goes, I watched it jump across a highway that was like 30 feet and then land on a rock ridge that was like also 10 feet to 15 feet higher than where it jumped from. He's like, I've never seen anything jump like that in my entire life. He goes, mm-hmm. but, but what they'll do is if they perceive a dog or something as a threat, like on their hunting grounds, sometimes they'll go and just rip its throat out. Oh my God, that's brutal. I've got a mini golden doodle. Like that guy can't, I mean, he's tough, but he can't really hold his own against too many other uh, four-legged yeah. species. <laughs> so I'm like, my sister always gives me crap too. Cause like, like the stereotypical big dogs, I, I never let my dogs meet because like they're so small that yeah. it takes two seconds you'll regret forever just for your like looking good. Yeah. And I tell you, when I saw them coming from afar and like the perpetrator is like a pit bull mix, like, like, it, like, and to see the way like he like knocked me down to the ground or for like, even today, like it's like, I've never been in a car accident and it feels like I've been in a car accident. The dog didn't even bite me. Like I, I could have sworn my butt was going to be bit when I was scurrying my dogs to the car. But I mean, these dogs are really powerful. Like, yeah. And, and, and it's crazy because, you know, I would have, I, I was obviously trying to defend my dogs, keeping them up in the air, running to the car. But, you know, you try to do everything you can for these little creatures, including put yourself on the line and something that big and powerful could just take you down. For sure. It's like, I understand the love that, that men and women have for their dogs. I mean, I have a lot of it for, for my little dude, Kumba. But when there are dog attacks, I mean, people vehemently defend pit bulls. And I, I understand that. You love your dog. You know what I mean? Sure. But like 75% of the time when I hear about a dog attack, it's either a pit bull or a pit bull mix. Like literally three out of four times. It's, it's, line, it's like they're responsible. I think it's like 93% of all dog on dog attacks. Really? That's legit? <laughs> Yeah, that's a legit statistic. See, all right, that was that was a fun little deviation. The um the other thing that I, I wanted to, <laughs> well, I hope your therapy goes well. Oh, yeah, speaking of bones, I'm glad none of mine are showing or broken. Um, you might want to get some bear spray or at least mace on your keychain. Like, I would have maced the shit out of those dogs and then soccer style kicked them. But um, when I got back up, I was like ravenous. I was like looking at the one dog. I was like about it, like honestly, like like wrestle it down to the ground. Yeah, I'd I'd mace up or bear spray up for. I mean, it's hard to carry on bear spray, but mace you can just. They got ones that you can have on your keychain. You know what I mean? And there's yeah. certain brands where they send you the actual mace spray, and then they send you a little practice one, so you can like actually practice what it would be like using it, and like okay. make sure you can. You're like, all right, I could get th- I could get this in someone or something's eyes if if need be. Yeah, it's kind of fun. So you pick it up on Amazon for like, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks. The other thing too is like so much of this ties in. You know, we talked about how the body is electromagnetic. And I did a podcast recently with um R Blank that you guys should listen to um on how to shield yourself from quote unquote smart technology. Um, but gut problems, accelerated aging. Uh, joint pain, inflammation, it can all also be caused in part by your electromagnetic environment. And with if, if you're spending too much time on your phone, if you're using Wi-Fi routers still, like we use all hardwired connections here, um, even the smart meters that are on people's homes send a blast of radiation two to six times a minute. And if you're if you're on a healing journey right now, of course, like utilize things like bone broth by going to the beauty and the broth.com entering discount code biohacks and saving yourself 15%, but also clean up your electromagnetic environment. Start, start putting your phone in airplane mode. Most of the day, get off of a, uh, a router that transmits and, um, so that you could, you know, hardwire your connection and turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on your computer and then call your power company and tell them that you want to participate in an opt out program where you can go back to, an analog meter that does not send a blast of radiation two to six times a minute. Some states will give you a little bit of pushback, but there's also forms that you can get online that uh, issue them a notice of liability saying, hey, look, we know from all the scientific literature that this stuff is dangerous. And if you refuse to take it off of my home, 
I, I, I want you to sign this, that you are liable for any damages that could occur to my family and, and any of our health. And then usually they're like, all right, we'll come take it off. Um, you just got to like push back a little bit. So that's, that's all super, super relevant and important because if your electromagnetic environment is not one that is conducive, one that we have evolved with over uh, thousands of years, it, it, if not longer, I don't know, who, who knows how long we've been here really. Um, but yeah, if your electromagnetic environment is not healthy, then you could find yourself always sort of swimming upstream trying to fix something through nutrition or exercise or supplements when, yeah, you're just getting microwaved all day and that's part of the problem. So I wanted to, uh, I wanted to put that out there as well. And, uh, Melissa, anything else that you feel compelled to share with our listeners before we land this plane? I, I feel a lot lighter after my venting and I'll just add a little note about entrepreneurship. What did your therapist charge you? Oh, a lot. All right. Throw some of that my way. Oh, man. A note on entrepreneurship. You know, it's never too late to to start and do something. There's no such thing as failure unless you accept failure, right? Technically, yeah. you can fail, like, if you keep trying to do something. You've only failed if you... When you quit. When you quit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if, you, if you don't learn any lessons from it, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of a failure. So live it. Go for it. Guys, if you've got value from this episode, if you've enjoyed it, um, the best thing that you could do is first and foremost, share it up. Let Melissa know that you appreciate her time, her energy, and her wisdom. And then support her by going to thebeautyandthebroth.com. Enter discount code biohacks to save yourself 15%. You've got the beef. You've got the chicken. You've got the vegan. Knock yourself out. And uh, yeah. If, if any of you decide to mainline it like I do when you're traveling, let me know. Send me a message and some pictures on Instagram. Um, Elizabeth, thank you so much for, for coming on today. I enjoyed our conversation. Had a lot of fun. Thank you, as did I. This was really, really great.